on Betty Washte, Gracie Horn i Machi Apie, Sissi Tawan och Betuan Oyate, Nanku Hunk Papa Oyate, Miti Oshbe, St. Paul, Minnesota, Edwati. Hello, my name is Gracie Horn, and my people are the Assistant Wapton Oyate, based out of Sisson, South Dakota, and the Standy Rock Nation, based out of North Dakota. Today, I wanted to share a story with you in an art activity. But before we get into that, I wanted to explain why I'm sharing this story and why I'm sharing a traditional Dakota story. So I, am, I was born and raised in Minnesota. And when I was little, much like yourself, I didn't have much Native American stories to kind of look up to that were mainstream. Representation means a lot to Native American people. Representation is a big word, meaning that it's all over the place. So there wasn't much representation when I was younger. The only thing I could really see that was mainstream was Pocahontas, which is an, an which basically is an accurate uh, description of what happened to Pocahontas. She was 12 years old and the Disney movie, she is an adult woman. And I wanted to, as an artist, um, as my kind of community art and what I give back to my own community was share stories to pretty much share that we are still here, the Dakota people and other tribes are still existent. Also giving some of our stories a chance to exist today. I have our little board here that says Magpie 2020, uh, but this story is called The Great Race and it's about the magpie. Some people are probably thinking and scratching their head like, what's a magpie and I've never seen this bird and you're probably right there's a, magpies are in um, and around the Midwest and it's kind of rare that you'll see them from far away it looks like it's just a black and white bird um, but when you get close or if it will ever let you get close it kind of has these feathers where they look like they're almost iridescent and almost peacock like um, so it's blues and purples and greens and it's a very very pretty bird and for you I have copied this picture and it's downloadable and printable for you to join in on this activity and so before we start before I share the story I wanted to go over some of the supplies that you will need. So I chose supplies that are super easy for you to have. We'll be doing a coloring sheet and we'll also be doing a printmaking activity using potatoes. Whereas like if you're at home doing this stuff, I wanna make sure that you're able to participate with the stuff that you have. If you have a, a computer and you're able to print it off, you can print off this drawing. And if you don't have that accessibility, then you can kind of freestyle your own bird. That it doesn't really matter. It's kind of like what's in your own imagination. With coloring in the magpie, you will need scissors. You will need a glue stick. And then I have my son's colored pencils here that you can use. Um, I mean, that you can, you can use colored pencils if you have crayons, that's, that's even better. If you even have um, the, the markers, you can use those too. Use whatever you have. The other part that for the potato stamp making part, you will need potatoes. Um, you will need a colored marker uh, just to trace out to cut out your stamp. Uh, you will also need a cutting board with a semi-sharp knife. And, um, and make sure for that part you have an adult to help you. You're gonna need a large piece of paper. If you have um, butcher paper, which is like the large pieces of paper, I have that too. You can use that. Um, it's super cheap at Michael's. Or if you wanna use recycled items, uh, which is much like butcher paper, um, butcher block paper is um, brown paper bags. That is great. I don't have one today. I have this pizza box. 
And this creates a really cool background for us to use. Um, every time I talk about the magpie, people are like, I've never, I've never seen this bird before. And, and I always say, look it up. It's a beautiful bird. So the story goes like this. So a long, long time ago, this is, this is a story that's based here in North America. Before colonization, which means before Europeans came to the, the United States and, you know, and South America, this place was called the Turtle Island. For us, for my people, for the Dakota people, other tribes have different interpretations. They have different creation stories. And here on Turtle Island, we had all these great animals, these great powerful animals. And in the animal kingdom here, the humans way, way, like a long time ago, um, were kind of inferior. That word inferior means less than. We did not have the, we were not the fastest. We by far were not the strongest. We didn't have fur. We couldn't fly. We just kind of were weaklings. Like, like we didn't have a lot going on for ourselves. We, you know, survived. With that, we were not, we weren't the humans that we are today. And so between all of the animals in the animal kingdom, and I, I, what I'm talking about are the animals that are here in the United States that exist. And they all decided that, hey, somebody needs to be number one. And we need to decide on who's going to be number one. And for the most part, they decided on their racing track being around the heart of everything that is. And that name, the heart of everything that is, is the Black Hills. That describes the heart of everything that is. To us, to the Dakota, Lakota, Nakota people, the Black Hills is representative of a heart. This heart of everything that is was also sacred to the animals. And so all the animals came together and they said, hey, somebody has to be number one. And how we're going to determine that is this great race. And this race will determine who's going to be number one. And everybody has to respect that. And that's going to be for all time. And so everybody, you know, not everybody, but the animals decided, yeah, we're going to do this. And so they sent their fastest runner. And, you know, lo and behold, the magpie was like, hey, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to actually enter this race too. It's kind of like the tortoise and the hare story. So everybody is kind of like, why is the magpie entering into this race? It's just like this little tiny bird, you know, a hawk is faster, an eagle is faster than the magpie. We don't really understand why this little bird wants to join in, but we're just gonna let him join in anyway. And so they all got ready at the start line and they went. And so they were all running around and the Black Hills is huge. I don't even, that would actually be a cool story to see how, how long it would take to get around the Black Hills, but it's, it's a long racetrack. So they start what, like running their fastest around the Black Hills and they were going and they were like thinking that, you know, you know, at one point it was the buffalo that was in first. And then at one point it was the wolf that was in first. And then lo and behold, the hawk, you know, swooped in and they were just like, you know, really into this race and they didn't realize that here's this little camouflage bird just swooping in you know, through and passing up people, but they never even paid attention to him. And then lo and behold, at the end of the race, the magpie won. Yes, the magpie won and came in first. And everybody was blown away that this little tiny bird won this race against all these great animals. You know, little bird won, this beautiful bird. And when the bird won, when the magpie won, he said, I am going to dedicate my winning to the humans. When the magpie dedicated his winning to the humans, that meant that the humans were the dominant species. And so there's more to the story for us for, for cultural reasons. I can't really go there. But 
every animal came forward and every animal respected the decision of the magpie. That's why the humans became dominant on this, on this turtle island. Now, had we opened this race up to Africa where there's cheetahs or, you know, other places where there was way faster animals, I don't know, probably would have been a different story. But here we had this great race and the magpie won. And because the magpie won and because it selflessly gave us, you know, this right to be um, the dominant species, here we are today. And that's what we are. And so what that means is, what this means for every generation is that every generation has this opportunity to make a change. And that means that animals can't speak, you know, that we don't speak their language. That means that you have to make the right decisions on their behalf. You have to listen to nature and you have to protect them. And so that is a story that we tell our children and we say, you have a great responsibility. And, and it's for you too. It's not just for our children, it's for you as a child. You are going to grow up to be an amazing person and you are going to have to make hard decisions like your parents or like your grandparents. And because of that, you have to speak on behalf of all those that cannot speak our language. After you get that all colored in, you're going to get your scissors and you're going to cut this out. And since my white, my background is white and stuff, I'm going to kind of just do a, a general outline. I'm not going to get too accurate with it. We have our creative landscape. So that's gonna go on here. And pretty much I want to have him kind of winning the race. So I'm gonna glue him on to here. There, he's winning. I want to add in an animal so I'm just going to sketch in an animal and I think pretty much I will do like the wolf So you're going to start off with your potato and make sure that you have the knife, the cutting board, and a paper towel to kind of make sure you get all the moisture out of it, parents that are going to be cutting this part. So what I do is I do long slices. Like this I like to do the long the longer way so I can and I'll put it on a paper towel to kind of, and I'll like dab it on each side so it gets all that moisture so what you do is you take your marker and you are going to create the outline for your stamp I want to do a heart for the other. Maybe I'll do like, it's a fast symbol, or, you know, it's like a swift symbol. So I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and parents, you can use an X-Acto knife or a um, box cutter, either or. And you're gonna make sure that you don't put your fingers too close to the blade. You're gonna kind of like, just don't get too close. You don't wanna cut yourself.
I went ahead and did the first stamps, which you can see here. It was supposed to be the swooshes, I, I called them. And I use gray and blue. And so I did the first three in gray. And then I did the, I have my medicine wheel stamp. And this is gonna just be symbolic stamping, I guess. I'll probably put it down here as like a border. And this is gonna, uh, medicine wheel means all my relations. So of course, um, I, I think I'm gonna do this in, in green and, and um, purple. So this is dry, so it's okay that this is on there. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush and And what you do is you're gonna take your paintbrush and you're gonna paint on your color. And I want these to kind of blend. So I'm gonna do two colors. Take it. And press it on make sure that I get even stamps and I'm just gonna use this just to make sure it stamps you can use a spoon too, a wooden spoon and I chose the heart as a sign of like gratitude for for this bird for the magpie and so this side's a little bit smoother so I'm gonna use this side and it's just gonna be a border Here's the final product. And there we go. The whole, the great race story uh, uh, told with potato stamps and with pencil drawing. And um, please take pictures of your work. I'd really like to see them. Okay, so here is the end product. Don't forget to sign your name. I always do the bottom right because well, I always do that. So you want to sign your name and then you want to write the year. Take pictures of your project or your print. I would really, really love to see them. It kind of helps me see how people did. And like, even if it, if you did something completely different, I really like to see what your rendition is. So, um, you know, take pictures, post it, hashtag it. And lastly, I want to say thank you to the Eastside Arts Council. They have been so generous to me and doing these videos and I love working with them. They, I got to do the art mobile this summer and it was great. And so stay tuned for the next video. The next video and the last video of my summer videos is going to be butterfly puppet making. So stay tuned for that one and Thanks for your time and I hope you enjoyed this video and please comment, um, please post pictures and we'll see you the next one. Thank you.